One of the most common problems we come across when communicating scientific findings is the confusion between correlation and causation. So here's a brief guide. Let's look at this graph. Now, along here, we've got the number of people wearing shorts. And up here, we've got the amount of ice cream being sold. And we observe this strong relationship. OK, this is a correlation or a link or an association. We're not assuming that wearing shorts causes you to buy ice cream or that buying ice cream makes people wear shorts. I think we can assume there's a common factor behind this relationship. For example, warm weather. Now, this is a very obvious example, but it's remarkable how often this basic confusion happens in science communication. Here's one of my favourite examples. It starts with a study which was called Socioeconomic Position and the Risk of Brain Tumour, a Swedish national population-based cohort study. But we're going to see how the message changed from the paper to the press release to the press coverage. The abstract reported that we observed consistent associations between higher socioeconomic position and higher risk of glioma. That is, richer people were diagnosed with more brain tumours, but they carefully only claim an association. The press release, however, reported that high levels of education linked to heightened brain tumour risk, even though the study was not actually about education. And then we get to what the Daily Mirror put in their headline, why going to university increases the risk of getting a brain tumour. So this clearly implies that the university itself causes the increased risk. You know, maybe it's all that hard work damaging the brain. Of course, you may be able to think of two reasons why this association might just happen anyway. Uh, first of all, that uh, richer people live longer, uh, but the authors did adjust for age. But secondly, the authors pointed out that richer people tend to get better health care and therefore are more likely to get diagnosed with an illness. Causation is when one thing directly influences another, and we can only confidently conclude that if we've done an experiment. For example, I might take all the people in the department and randomly allocate them to either wear shorts tomorrow or not and see whether the shorts wearing group consume more ice cream. But most of our studies are observational. We just look at people and measure things. And we can only then conclude that two factors may be linked or associated or correlated. We cannot say what would happen if we changed one factor. Of course, if we've got other supporting evidence, we might still be able to make some tentative causal claims, even from observational studies. So, how do we communicate correlation? Let's look at some phrases. When reporting a study, it's vital to know whether the claim is causation or correlation. Essentially, has an intervention been done or not? The Science Media Centre has suggested some phrases so, for example, if you can only conclude correlation, you might say linked to or is associated with. If you can be confident about causation, you might say reduces or boosts, increases, can reduce, can boost. If it's sort of in between, maybe there's a good observational study with some strong supporting evidence, you might even say may reduce, may boost, mm, you know, at a push. What you don't want to do is what happened in the brain tumour study when the scientists clearly said is associated with, but the newspaper reported increases. So, you have to be clear whether the claim is correlation or causation and then use appropriate language.